So a while ago, a friend of mine asked me about some painting by Rackstraw Downs. How did he do that? How do you do stuff like that? How do you do that weird, curving, open-up space um, that he's depicting? And I did this quick run-through on drawing in what I call four-point perspective. In this four-point perspective system, verticals just stay vertical. If it's up and down in the real world, it's up and down on the page. Um, it's kind of the equivalent of a two-point perspective system in straight-line perspective. And I was asked, why? Why do they stay vertical? And the answer is sort of because we chose it to be that way. There are different perspective drawing systems, different curved linear drawing systems where that doesn't happen. Um, the most well-known uh, perspective drawing, uh, curved linear perspective, is five-point perspective. So I'm going to have a horizon. And a vertical horizon, if you will. And draw a circle. So, the center of the circle is our direction that we are looking. And the perimeter of the circle is 90 degrees off of it. So this is 180 degrees field of vision. So if we are looking north, then over here is east, and over here is west. Now the cool thing is down here is down, and up here is up. And in this system, uh, if we're right in the center of vision, which coincides with north here. So we're looking flat on something. This is sort of like one point perspective. Um, if a line is going straight up in the middle of our vision, it's straight up. But if it's out towards the edges, it's curving out here from up to down. And we can use our compass to draw those arcs. We just put the foot of the compass on the line going through east and west, and the drawing tip of our compass on up, and it'll make an arc that represents a vertical in this drawing system. Um, if we want to draw a line from east to west, it's the same setup. We put uh, the foot of our compass on the line between up and down, and the drawing tip on east, and it'll make an arc from east to west. Now, um, if we're looking at lines going north, in this system, they don't curve. They just go straight out. Because we're looking dead set at the center of this thing. Um, so north, or forward, in this case, we can think of this as forward, left, right, up, down. Forward and backward, north and south, they line up because we're looking exactly that direction. And so these arcs become a straight line. So if I want to draw a cube up here and like a big cube down here, uh, not cube, rectangular solid. I'm not going to worry about making them uh, symmetrical. So... Uh, this line here is so close to the center that it's almost straight, which means I need a huge radius of circle going way off my page to get it. And I can't do that today. So I'm going to eyeball that edge there. And likewise, the smallest arc I can draw with my tools here on this limited system is all the way up here. And I want to draw down here. So I'm just going to eyeball that. So 
there's this arc, there's this arc. Um, just freehand it because they're too close to the center uh, to draw efficiently with the compass. But here are my corners, back corners of my rectangular solid. And so the lines that are facing north-south all point to our north, north vanishing point. So here's the bottom of my cube. Work that just a little close to closer to center. And again, there are mathy ways to find the right distance to put your compass out, but mainly easier to just do it trial by error, trial and error. Although, if you want to know more about the math end, it does make guessing where your foot should be a little easier. And so now that I've said that, I feel like I should uh, say how that is. Okay, so I want to draw the arc that goes between here, that the vertical arc that passes through there, right? Or actually, this is the one I know. Okay, so you want to find the vertical arc that passes through this point. You're going to draw a line from that point to the top vanishing point. You're going to cut it in half and draw a line perpendicular to that that passes through that halfway point. Where that line crosses the other axis, that's the center of your circle. So you put the foot of your compass there, the tip at the up or down vanishing point, and you draw your arc. This works whichever vanishing point you chose to go to. There we go. All right, so here's the bottom of my cube. The side of my cube and the front face of my box, rather, not cube. So let's do this guy that I want to do down here. All right, and this thing's huge. It's taken up amazing amounts of my field of vision. Moving closer and closer to the center. Find that line for the front face. And then I need to flip my point over to the other side to try to draw this guy. And again, it's just going to go, I've got to have the end of my compass off the page there. So I'm just going to, that's the smallest arc my compass can draw right now. So I'm just going to freehand that arc. And then this one, we're pretty close to the bottom. We're not quite that close. There we go. I like that. So here's the front face of my cube. Here's the side going up to down. Here's a side going up to down. Here's a side going east to west. Here's a side going east to west. And the side going north, the edges going north, are straight lines back to that central vanishing point. And 
And on this piece of paper, that's the smallest arc I can draw, so I'm just going to freehand the top edge. All right, so in a five-point perspective system, everything going up and down arcs. Everything going side to side arcs. Everything going forward to backward is a straight line radiating towards that center. And this is a system designed for looking straight dead in the center. Um, but in this case, verticals don't stay vertical, except if they're in, in the middle, they arc around. So that's the basics of five-point perspective. It's the simplest, most common version of curvilinear perspective. Uh, and it's sort of the equivalent of one-point perspective in uh, straight-line perspective, rectilinear perspective. We're just looking straight ahead, square onto the scene. We're not looking up, we're not looking down, we're not looking left, we're not looking right, we're looking straight ahead. But because it's curvilinear, we're looking straight ahead, but man, our peripheral vision is open way up. Uh, whereas uh, traditional uh, sort of classical perspective would let us see this circle in here, uh, a cone of vision in here, we can see all of this. We can see half the world in this. But it is a big limit, right? It only works if we're looking straight ahead or straight up or straight down. Um, if we wanted to look a little over to the side and stuff, then we move into the really fun stuff, which is six-point perspective, uh, where up and down converge, uh, west and east converge, and north and south distort and converge. It's fun stuff for a different time.